So I will try to explain some of the design considerations in respect with the temperature controlled XTAL oscillator. In my transverter we have a kind of a compartment. This is the oscillator compartment and here we have some driver compartment. But you already can see that the heat is radiating to this shielding and some later the temperature will rise in the oscillator and the crystal and it will drift in frequency. The idea now is to isolate this with uh, isolation material, material and heat it up inside here on a constant temperature what is about 10 degrees higher than what we will normally occur here. So we need at least in the inside this part we need to have a heater and a sensor. For the heater I was thinking about a, a, a MOSFET. You can heat of course with resistors etc. But this semiconductor already heats itself. So I want to make a RRF a MOSFET 15, 530, 540 or whatever uh, as a heater. Then we need a sensor. You can use a uh, negative uh, temperature coefficient uh, resistor, but I didn't have it, so I used a single diode. That's also possible. However, in the, inside this circuit, uh, I have the space, enough space for more diodes, and one diode is a point. 2 volt per uh, degree Celsius. So I thought let's make 2 in series. Then I have doubled it. Then you see more uh, drift in voltage while the temperature drifts. So you need a resistor of course to have some current flowing through it and you can have here your voltage output. That was the idea. Then you have to compare it with something fixed. So for example we have a pot meter here. We have plus here. A pot meter with a kind of a reference. And we compare it of course with a comparator. And this is a normal 741 uh, comparator, op amp comparator, and in this case it compares this voltage with this voltage, and the output of the comparator will be high or low depending on the difference if it is higher or lower. In this case, when the temp is lower, voltage here will rise. And when it is higher than the adjusted voltage, the output will be high. So we can switch here, of course, the heater. And it's a fed directly to the DC voltage. Small decoupling capacitor. And this one is to the ground. But when it goes high, it com completely goes into saturation. So you have a very large current, a lot of heat. So we don't want to have that. We make it a bit adjustable by adding here a potentiometer to limit the current. And when you adjust this between 2 or 4 volt, you can uh, change the current to the maximum. So that's the whole circuit I thought, but it didn't work too good because I have a single power supply here. It is not plus and minus, but only plus. And 
it seemed that they didn't uh, have enough input voltage to see the difference. So I added a small resistor here. So this voltage here is now uh, bit up and I readjusted this one of course and what you see then and when the temperature here is high output will be low and when the temp is low the output will be high so then the heater is on in time it looks like this it switch on and when the temperature is reached it switches off and when the temperature is lower it switches on again and what you see is it switches on and off and on and off and then it depends on the isolation and the mass etc if this is sufficient or not it is possible the temperature will go with this on off on off it will go like this. What you can do is add a resistor from here to here and now the gain is not uh, the maximum but it is a bit reduced and what you see now in time compared with this at first it switch on maximum current that could be adjusted with the pot meter from, from the fat but when it reach the temperature it will not switch off but it will go lower and when the temperature is reached it will stay on a certain level and that level is of course the same power as when you have here with 50% duty cycle you have about this level some heat is coming from this transistor then it will of course go some lower so you get at least a stable temperature here it was a bit play to find the correct value of this uh, resistor so in fact this is the circuit, some resistor here. What is critical here is of course this voltage needs to be stable. So you can add a resistor and a Zener diode or a voltage regulator or whatever as long as this is stable. So I ended up with this test circuit or in fact two circuits one is the fat with the clothes pin uh, on it and the diodes uh, behind it and a small uh, thermo sensor one like this in fact it's a bit large to hold by the uh, clothes pin and this is the comparator and I added here the 2M2 resistor to have a more smooth effect otherwise it only switch on and off and now you have more or less smoother uh, current the temperature here in the shack is now uh, with this sensor measured 16.9 degrees and this sensor is 18 degrees and this is the voltage and the current of the fat I now switch the comparator on and you see immediately that we have more than 100 milliampères going through the fat so it's really on and with the temperature we see that it's rising rapidly and I want to have it about around 40 degrees Celsius it uh, doesn't matter exactly what temperature it will be but in fact this shows the circuit that you sooner or later get a kind of stable uh, current and that is what is needed to keep the temperature 
on the same level. And of course this will be different when you have it really in circuit because you then don't have a clothespin on it but likely more isolation material when you see when it is close to 40 it's almost this with the help of some dummy crystal I uh, took some uh, tube, a 12 meter copper pipe and I uh, cut off the length some longer than the crystal and I made it uh, this shape uh, with this vise and uh, to fit to make the crystal fit uh, into it. Then I cut it a bit uh, to open it to make it uh, another shape to make it possible to uh, assemble the fat on it. With this copper block and the fat on it and the diodes close near the crystal we have uh, likely another uh, way, another current needed especially when it is filled with insulation or covered with insulation material the crystal that needs to be kept in the same temperature is below this fat and the copper piece fits over it, diodes are inside. The problem only is I don't know exactly what temperature it is because the sensor is not in this circuit and I also don't know uh, when the current is uh, taken and therefore I added this to the circuit. The LED will light up when energy is taken. This kind of foam I wrapped around the crystals. And this is the whole circuit. It could even be smaller. I already drilled the hole for the LED on the front with the two resistors behind. So I ended up with this schematic. I added a red LED with a resistor, in this case 25.5, so it's combined by several resistors. Uh, this LED is on the front and it shows when current is taken through the FET. And I added several capacitors to decouple the RF signal because as soon as the transmitter started, the LED red started to light. I also added a zener diode here because I found out that when I uh, have a higher or lower DC voltage, uh, this voltage is of course also higher or lower. So I wanted to limit the maximum current of this FET. And the result. I switch the transverter on and you see immediately the LED light up so the heater is on I have a beacon small beacon and you see here what the frequency is and it, it looks rather stable but as soon as it heats up it will drift in you see it already happening Here you see that the line is already more stabilizing. And in total, a few minutes later, you have a straight line showing it's stabilized. However, the LED is still uh, red. Mostly because a lot of metal parts need to be heated up there. And after a longer period of time, the heater LED, that is in series with the FET, will glow only a bit and if you wait longer it will turn off completely. So it gives a real good indication what's happening on the heater. 
hopefully you enjoyed this video and maybe till next time bye